explorers. My name is Beth and welcome to Exploration Place. Today's lesson is called pool noodle genetics. We're going to use pool noodles for our chromosomes. But before we go on, have you ever wondered why you look like one of your parents more than the other or a brother or sister? Maybe you don't look at all alike. And we're going to talk about why you have traits that are sa the same or similar or very different. So, what we're going to use today are three pairs of chromosomes. My green pool noodles are called autosomes. So I have one pair here, another pair here. These are shorter. Not all chromosomes are the same size. These are also autosomes. And our other pair that we're going to use are the sex chromosomes. So 23 chromosomes in every cell of your body, but we're only going to look at three pairs today. So. Some of you may remember from biology class, this is your X chromosome, this is your Y chromosome. This represents, what is it? That's right, it's a male. Our female has two X chromosomes. They're of similar size. So again, you have 23 pairs of chromosomes in every cell of your body, but today we're only going to look at three pairs. We're also going to look at three genes. One of those genes is for eye color. The yarn on the chromosome, the yarn on the pool noodle represents the gene, okay? And one of those is eye color. Eye color in our bodies varies a whole lot. We're only gonna do brown and blue. You have as many as 16 genes that represent your eye color. We're also going to look at hair color. Again, it has a lot of genes that control it, but we're gonna use dark and blonde. And then our third gene we're going to look at today is for blood clotting. Now, blood clotting is something we take for granted. You have a cut and your blood clots, you get a scab. But some people have a genetic disorder called hemophilia. In that illness, like this person, they have a gene for that. And if they have two of these genes, their blood will not clot properly, and they may have to go to the hospital if they have a serious cut. Well, what you're going to use today at home, using the instructions posted on, with the video, you're going to have strips of paper, and you're gonna write the same information on your strips of paper that I have, and put colored marks to represent your genes. So why don't we pause right now, and you can go and make your chromosomes. Welcome back. Let's look at our parents and look at their what's called genotype and phenotype. Genotype is the set of genes that a person has for that trait. In this case, our, this is the male, see the M at the top. We have a big B and a little b. Now, sometimes, usually the big B is written before the big b, little b, but sometimes you can have them backwards. It really doesn't make a big difference. But the genotype is the pair of genes they have for a trait. The phenotype, which I know it sounds like an F, but the word has a P in it. And phenotype is for appearance, which also has a P in it. So you can match those words up. So this is our male. He has, for eye color, a big B and a little b. The big B is a dominant gene. The little b represents a recessive gene. Now, big B goes with brown eyes, little b goes with blue eyes. Now, you don't get a mixture. Now, sometimes that does happen in nature, but this one, the dominant gene, the big B covers up the little b. So, on our board here, let's put the trait for the male. He has a genotype of big B, little b. And remember, we said the big B covers up the little b, Big B is for brown eyes, little b is blue eyes. So this man will have brown eyes. That will be his phenotype. Let's look at mom, the female. She has the same genotype, a big B and a little b. And that means what color will her eyes be? That's right, they're gonna be brown, just like the guy. So we have two people, a male and a female, one with, or each of them have, brown eyes. All right, so that's one trait. 
we're going to look at hair color. Oh, backing up just a moment, another term we use is a description of having a dominant and a recessive. That is called heterozygous. The prefix hetero means different. It's a good thing to learn those Latin terms. So this is a heterozygous genotype. All right, so our male for hair color. Notice this chromosome is smaller, and that's, that happens in your body. We have a capital D and a lowercase d. And the letters, they're just picked at random. They kind of go along with it, but I can't keep using Bs or Hs. Depends on what it is. So we have Ds. Big D, dominant. Little D, recessive. And so their genotype is big D, little D for hair color. They're going to have dark hair. Maybe black, maybe brown, but they have dark hair. Our male has dark hair. Our female, look, she has two little D's and she has yellow string. She has blonde hair. She has two recessive genes. This is called homozygous recessive. The prefix homo in Latin means the same or similar. And so she has a genotype of little d, little d, and she has blonde hair. So we have a male with brown eyes, dark hair, and a female with brown eyes but blonde hair. Our last trait that we're going to look at is on the sex chromosome. It is the gene for normal blood clotting. So if you look at this, again, that gene's only on the X chromosome, not on the Y. Males have a different chromosome. That's what makes them male. This, when we show it, he is X, that's the chromosome, capital H, that's the dominant gene, and his Y chromosome and he has normal blood clotting. His blood clots normally. He doesn't have to worry about it. If he gets a cut, he will form blood clots. Our female though, she is X capital H, the dominant gene, and she has an X with a little h, the recessive gene. But remember, dominant genes cover up recessive genes. So she has normal blood clotting. But she has a special word for her. She is a carrier. Again, her genotype is X, capital H, X with a little h. And she has normal blood clotting, but she is a carrier, which means she can pass that trait onto her offspring. So these are the parents and what they look like. Now it's time to produce some offspring. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two chromosomes and I'm going to put them behind my back and we're going to let our class pick my left hand or a right hand and you can do this along at home, okay? So, Aaliyah, which hand should I pick? Left. Left, okay. So, we have in our offspring, our offspring number one will have a capital B, a dominant gene for brown eyes. That doesn't mean they're brown eyed yet, but probably will be. So we're going to put on our board a capital B and, okay, from the female. Okay, we have these two. I'm going to put them behind my back. Okay. Tyrone. Right. Right. They get a capital B also. So even though the chromosomes come from a male and a female, the offspring get one of each. When you are made, you got half of mom's chromosomes, you got half of dad's, and they pair up even though they come from male or female, no matter what your resulting sex is. So what color eyes do they have? Two dominant genes, that means that's right, they're brown. And now, looking at them, you wouldn't know that. They have two big Bs versus a big B, little B, but they have brown eyes. 
This is called homozygous dominant. Two of the same thing, and they're both dominant. All right, let's see what hair color our kids are gonna have. All right. All right, let's see. Aaron, which hand? Left. Left. All right, we got a capital D. We're having a lot of dominant genes here today. So, we need to use a capital D up here. All right, hold it. These are the same. So even if I have Taylor pick one, they're gonna be the same. So I have a recessive gene, so we're gonna, not, we're gonna let Taylor pick on the next time. So we have a little d. Now, what color hair is that gonna be? Blonde or dark? They have a dominant gene. That's right, if they were gonna have dark hair. Now, your results, if you're doing this with me, may not be exactly like mine, all right? And that's okay, because not every child your parents had are exactly alike. All right, let's check, let's find out what sex our offspring's gonna be, and see about blood clotting factors. So, Taylor, I said you could do this next, so which hand do you want me to pick? Left. Left. They're, I think they're picking left a lot. All right, we have an X chromosome, and it has the capital H on it. So, let's put that in our box, and I bet you already know what sex is our offspring gonna be, because we only have X chromosomes left, but we wanna check on the blood clotting factor, okay? So, oh, Felicia, would you pick a hand? Right. Right. All right. We have X capital H. So again, we knew it was going to be a female, but she got the capital H, the dominant gene, and that means normal blood clotting. There is, she's a female and not a carrier for the trait at all. All right, well, how about you go ahead and make your offspring at home. You can do two, three, and four, and see what happens. See if their eye colors match. We had everybody brown eyes. Could I have a blue-eyed child? Could I, I, could I have a blonde? All right, so look at those traits and try doing the same thing where you pick a chromosome and find out what happens. All right, thank you. Welcome back. I hope you had fun making your boys and girls your children of your parents. Now, we're gonna wrap up and do some questions. First off though, I made a few more offspring. We have three offspring, two have brown eyes, one has blue eyes. We have two with dark hair, one with blonde. And then we had a girl, she had normal blood clotting. We had a boy. His Y disappeared for some reason, but it was a male. And he has a lowercase h, so he's hemophiliac. So they have to be careful of how he plays, maybe, behaves, because they don't want him to bleed too much. And then we have another boy that has normal blood clotting. So you can have lots of traits and variations in your family. Now, just a reminder, what did the pool noodles or the strips of paper represent? That's right, these are your chromosomes. And on the chromosome, these yarn pieces or your blue, red, all of your colored marks, those represent genes. Now, today we looked at three chromosomes. How many chromosome pairs do you have in your body? 23 pairs, every cell. And this one I didn't expect you to remember, but we have at least 20,000 pairs of genes in our body. Now. If you have the X and the Y sex chromosome, what sex is that offspring? That's right, it's a boy. If you have two X chromosomes, that's the female, okay? So, why doesn't the male have two genes for blood clotting? This chromosome doesn't carry that gene. It's a little bit smaller, so it doesn't have all the same genes. Males have a few genes that women don't have, and that's the way we are made. 
So, do you notice, again, how offspring are different than your parents? How offsprings are different or maybe alike with their siblings? Everybody gets a mixture of traits. Thank you for coming. Hashtag us on social media.